the story of Rhodesia, a land both fair and great. On the 11th of November, an independent state. This was much against the wishes of certain governments, whose leaders tried to break us down and make us all repent. But we're all Rhodesians and we'll fight through thick and thin. We'll keep our land a free land, stop the enemy coming in. We'll keep them north of us and easy to let rivers running dry. And this mighty land will prosper for Rhodesians never die. They can send their men to murder and they can shove their words of hate. But the cost of keeping this land free can never be too great. For our men and boys are fighting for the things that they hold dear. And this land and all its people will never disappear. Cause we're all Rhodesians and we'll fight through thick and thin. We'll keep our land a free land, stop the enemy coming in. We'll keep them north of us and easy to that river's running dry. This mighty land will prosper, for religions never die. We'll preserve this little nation for our children's children too. Once you're a Rhodesian, no other land will do. We will stand tall in the sunshine with the truth upon our side. And if we have to go alone, we'll go alone with pride. Cause we're all Rhodesians and we'll fight through thick and thin. We'll keep our land the free lands of the enemy coming in. We'll keep them north of us and easy to let rivers running dry. And this mighty land will prosper for Rhodesians never die. Yes, we're all Rhodesians and we'll fight through thick and thin We'll keep our land the free lands of the enemy coming in We'll keep them north of us and easy To let rivers running dry And this mighty land will prosper for Rhodesians never die Because we're Hello everyone, my name is Notepad and on today we're going to be we're going to be writing Hearts of Darkness. And so it looks like we actually have two people here in the uh, document with us. So a lot of things change <laughs> from last night. Uh, last night, in addition to today, I kind of had a uh, emotional revelation about myself and I well, I fulfilled my promise for gun autism. So if we go to equipment, body armors will remain relatively unchanged. But, as you can see, I added guns. I added a lot of guns. Too many guns. Way too many guns. So, <laughs> roughly speaking... I've added one, two, three, four, five, uh, yeah, I added a lot of guns. <laughs> there are quite a few new guns for characters to play around with, have fun with, from things to coach guns to bolt action rifles, carbines, uh, you have <laughs> saws and, you know, squad automatic weapons, designated marksman rifles, that completely got butchered. Uh, so yeah. I added a lot of things here for people to have fun with and play with and kill people with. That sounded a lot worse than it actually is. And if we scroll all the way down here, uh, fix this up a little bit as well. Fix the various tags, 10 tag effects, pretty much what what weapons do what. Uh, this isn't very pretty, but eh, it works. 
and I also fix vehicles. Now, you're wondering why I didn't show this on stream. It was because it was literally me sitting here, hitting up arrow, down arrow, type out, type out vehicle, go back, type out vehicle, go back, and then one hull, two hull, one hull, two hull. It was like going to the eye doctor, not exactly the pulse-pounding experience that you really want from the development of Hearts of Darkness. Yeah! Really intense, but yeah, no one, no one's really uh, coming for me to beat my head up against a wall. But we have full-size vehicles, compact car, full-size cars, heavy trucks. Scroll down a little bit more. We have light trucks, muscle cars, off-road SUVs, sports cars, vans. Then we have converted vehicles, which is pretty much slapping a giant-ass gun to the back of whatever car you have. And if we go a little bit further down, uh, I should actually. Yeah, no, we have adventure touring bikes, choppers, cruisers, dirt bikes, power cruisers, power... I actually learned about power scooters and scooters today. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're in the game now. Why are they in the game, you ask? Because I found them, and because it was going to be a big old joke. We actually have some, uh, looks like two, three more people showed up. Because I wanted to add it in, because it was a big old meme. So yeah, you, and here's my accurate representation of you being the African warlord in your scooter. And we also have, ooh. Can I move this a little bit? Oh God. Okay, you know what? No, 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 we're not gonna deal with that. Uh, we also have a light war machines. Ambush protected vehicles, armored bulldozers, armored cars, armored recon vehicles, improvised tanks. Pretty much you can, you, yes you, yes you can have the Bob Semple tank. Your African Bob Semple tank. In addition to light armor, light APCs, light assault vehicles. We scroll down to heavy war machines. Uh, why are you heading three? You want normal text. Heavy armor, heavy APCs, heavy battle tanks. Infantry fighting vehicles, effectively a BMP if you've ever heard of one of those before which is Russian for infantry fighting vehicle. Uh, can I fix that? Yes. Uh, light battle tanks, super heavy tanks, tank destroyers, and finally the tiny little baby tankettes. And you kind of see here, aquatic vehicles and aeronautic vehicles, they didn't get much love. You may be wondering, why didn't they get much love? Because I didn't know how to do them. To be perfectly honest and frank, I could have spent a lot of time on them, but I didn't, for two reasons, mostly. The first reason is that a lot of battles take place on the ground in African conflicts. That's just kind of a default state of being, arguably. That you're not fighting in the air, you're not fighting the naval the naval war because you're going to be land you're going to be inland. You're fighting to take points inland. You might, like, the most intense thing you're maybe going to be, going to be doing is going to be t sailing across the river and uh, attacking a point on the other side. That's kind of, kind of going to be the biggest impactful thing, or maybe going across the lake for naval. And for aeronautics, the enemy is going to have better, bigger stuff than you. You're going to be able to get some helicopters. You know, light attack choppers and heavy attack. I should actually call those helicopters. Thinking on it, helicopters. So, when I start moving on gradually to different expansions, I will most most likely most likely helicopter. I will most likely be adding things like additional uh, uh, air vehicles, additional sea vehicles, and playing around more with that, because I think that would be pretty fun. But for the purposes of this incredibly specific thing and entity as of it is right now, adding in those things aren't doing much. I wouldn't be adding anything, because you wouldn't be able to really use them at all. Now you may be wondering, but like, with no pad to add on, you literally have BMPs. You may be able to get BMP. I don't, I don't know. I'm not your GM. So, fix all this. And then what armaments do. Uh, that was actually from, I believe, the first Toyota War, effectively. Welcome to the land of converted vehicles. 
right, yeah, okay. So, as judging by the stream title today, we're going to be working on fixing the magic and campaign system. Those are going to be our two main goals. Now, the magic system is not what you would traditionally expect when you hear the words magic system in a game. You know, you think magic system, you think, I cast magic missile, or, you know, I cast fireball, or fuck you and the horse you rode in on, I'm using whatever bullshit I can find in Ars Magica. No, it's a lot more subtle, because at the end of the day, this is taking place in the real world. Magic is more about faith. It's more about belief. It's more about having that feeling of, yeah, I believe honestly that, you know, <laughs> the big man upstairs is protecting me. That yes, I'm not going to die. Huh. Someone pointed out something in the, the thread here. So, we're going to go on a little investigation, because apparently, survivors and slaughter isn't where it's supposed to be. So we're going to go here. Survivors and slaughter. Post-apocalyptic. Yeah, this is one of the many um, side things I'm going to work on. I haven't actually worked on this in a while. I'm gonna ask about it, so I should fix it. Maybe wondering why do you, why do it on stream? Because you have important things to do on stream, right? Right? No, no. <laughs> Let's be honest with ourselves, everyone. It's my stream. We play. We don't. We don't play by the rules, of scheduling, and conventional wisdom. We just drink a lot and listen to cafe music. Uh, where would you be? Where are you? Right there. Show file location. Uh. Nani? Oh. Weird. You're not supposed to be there. Uh, project folder dies. Uh, survivors and slaughter. We want to move you there. Yeah, let's screw it. Let let let's bring everyone on stream. Here's the thread. Uh, let's see. Uh, this man is the cuckoo ca choo choo. Here, let me just type this out. Uh, hey, it got placed somehow in the wrong folder. Should be in there now. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, I should actually post. If it doesn't, expect a, another post like this after the next update. Uh, the next major series of updates. Probably when I start on. Probably after I integrate the expansions. All right, there we go. Ta-da! Never call me not a man of the people. Except I'm not a Cindy. Don't trust syndicalists, everyone. Uh, let's see. Beauty, 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 beauty. That's what I like to see. Okay, so. Magic. Magic and juju. So, this entire system is based on faith, as well as luck, as well as practicality. There's, this is kind of a, a three-pronged system. 
The first one is faith. Faith in Africa and faith in a lot of places kind of comes into a pretty major effect. Luck and throwing your hands up in the air and saying, please God, give me this, give me something is a big deal there. And believing in things gives them power. If you look in a lot of different Af uh, African myth mythologies and kind of backgrounds, you notice that that's a big deal. Faith brings about change. Doesn't matter if you're Christian, doesn't matter if you're Muslim, doesn't matter if you're one of the more traditional religions that are still operate somewhere. Faith brings change there. And doing your best to bring that change is a big deal. So, that's, so the major effect of how this works is you draw five cards. So I'm going to say uh, draw five random cards. So I'm going to draw these five cards as an example. Thanks, random.org. Uh, yeah. Yep, draw cards. I didn't mean to do that. I need to draw draw five cards. We'll just we'll just do a basic five cards. So let's say these are this is our hand right here. And uh, if we go back to Heart of Darkness working. Hearts recollects to your toughness. Pretty much any time you use your toughness score for, let's say you have to mount something real fast, you're fighting someone in melee combat, you're trying to overpower someone, you're doing anything that really involves your toughness, play a heart card and you automatically get to add it to it. So for example, if I wanted to roll this six here, I could play that six and then immediately get a plus six to that roll. The downside is, that means the game master gets it. You give me it. If you ever played in something akin to Edge of the Empire, is you kind of get the idea of how this works. The four, four force points, I think they're called. Like good side, bad side. I can't remember the exact phrasing of it, but it's the base idea of I give you something, you give me something. Still checking some things. And, but... As you can kind of see here, uh, let's see, okay, we have a king of diamonds here. So if you look in here, diamonds is sleaze, your sleaze score. So your kings can be played to give another player a five, plus five in that role. You normally can't play on other players, except if you're the, the uh, priest or the sorcerer. And that means you can play on other characters a little bit more easy and you take their cards. The sorcerer gets to manipulate a lot of this mechanic. But let's say I have a king. I noticed that he's going to fail that sleaze check. He needs to get that sleaze check. Slam that king down. All yours. I believe in you. I, I, he has a king now. The game master has a king now. And that means any time any of us want to make a roll for sleaze, he may, he may be able to play that king immediately. Oh, you got a negative five on it now. Have fun. It's like, but what? Negative five on my sleaze check? That's insane. Luck goes both ways. It's your juju, what you believe in. Jokers are also incredibly powerful. Jokers let you defy death, but they do nothing else. So having a joker in your hand, on one hand, is very all good. You're not going to die that session. And if you do die, you got, you got your out. At your last minute, haha, I've bamboozled you. On the other hand, you may only have three cards. That means you only have two cards to really spend on yourself for things. That also means the Game Master gets the Joker card if you play it. So do you want to give it to the Sorcerer, maybe, and have him kind of duel it out? Or do you want to keep it? you want to be selfish with it? That's kind of how magic works. It is the risk, reward, desire, and always kind of betting that spending. You still don't spend too much, that means the Game Master is going to amass a bit, a lot of cards to play. You do two, three big card hits. Yeah, you get all these bonuses, and you're going to break the pot. So you see, if players exceed a 21 given to the GM, the magic is gone. Bust. All characters and the GM discard their hand. And that's the problem. You hit 21, the Game Master has no more magic. You have no more magic. Nobody else does, unless you have a Joker, which you can defy it. So maybe you do want to give that Joker to the Sorcerer. 
But you also want to keep your cards, but you don't want to... You don't want to risk it. Welcome to playing the game. You play too fast, too aggressively, you're going to break the magic. Every No one gets anything. You play it too liberally, and suddenly no one has anything. But you play too conservatively, suddenly the Game Master is just tossing cards away. A little here. Oh, you have a negative three on your toughness check. You have a negative two on your toughness check. Oh, you don't explode your die. You don't. No, I want you to re-roll. I want you to re-roll all your dice. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to clean this section up. So we're going to open up our notepad here. So. Um... I think this works. So let's see, king and me. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do kings and then if played by a character, they give another they give another character plus five to the attribute check to a attribute check to a attribute check if played by the narrator they give a character Ooh, do I want to be really evil with it I think I'm going to be really evil with it they give all characters a negative five to attribute check. Nah, nah, they get give one. Nah, nah, I'm going to say give, give one character a negative five to an attribute check to the edge to the attribute check to the attribute check queens played by a character they give another player a reroll to all of their dice to their reroll to their dice must take must take the new result if played by the narrator we force reroll on the, the next check by any player they must take the new result they must take New results. Oh, welcome to so Jax. If played by a character, they re-roll their their dice. Take the new result played by the narrator. I force the character to re-roll their next their next check. They must take the new result. So, what does this mean in play? So, pretty much, if you play a queen, you can say, "Hey, uh, Bob." You're gonna roll, you know, hey, you're gonna, you rolled a one there and that's atrocious and we hate it, so here, take that, re-roll it. Hey, you got a five, you didn't fail miserably at life. On the other hand, if the narrator gets it, they slap it down, be like, alright, next one of you makes a check, has to re-roll it. Suddenly, everyone's looking at each other, saying, what do, what's the next check we make? Because any check we make... It's immediately going to be called into question. 
Will we succeed or will we fail? It's a gamble, who knows? Mostly it's a bummer when someone rolls a 10 on their next check and then roll, for has to re-roll it to a one. Jax, on the other hand, you pretty much say, I'm gonna re-roll that die because it was terrible. And, and the narrator takes it and the next roll, he looks at the next player making the roll, he's like, yay, I'm gonna make a roll. Slap it down, you're gonna re-roll it. It's a little bit more directed. With queens, you can kind of work around it. Jax, you can't really. So, aces. Uh, if played by a character, yeah, it immediate, immediately explode their dice, ignoring failures. If played by the narrator, they cancel an explosion of a die. Yeah, pretty simple with that one. Hey, I, got, I, I rolled a three, and you know I'm going to explode that die. Roll it again, add everything together. Hey, cool. Narrator says, hey, I rolled a ten. This is awesome. I'm going to roll again. No, you're not. <laughs> Lamau, nerd. You know, aces are pretty good for the player in question because it allows you to add a little bit more, but it also means you can get interfered with a little bit more. So it's kind of the push-pull there as well. If you haven't noticed, uh, Uh, he's one. He's questioning what the nature of the name was about. Yes. They're about the horrors. Shit that goes on. Shit that goes on in the area. The original. The other name ideas. I had were either copyright, either had copyright, or were well terrible. Uh, who wants to play Africa? What was, what is the original name for this? Actually, God, I don't even remember what the original name was. Yeah, it was something. It was. It was an AK forty seven Republic. Because I distinctly remember the other names were frankly awful in a plethora of ways. I do mean they were absolutely atrociously terrible. So let's go. Ooh. Jokers, if played by a character, they defy death, disaster, or the magic going bust. If played by the narrator. Uh, they call it use reversal. Negative 10 to everyone's next roll. <laughs> Jokes, yes, that is, yeah, you don't want. And jokers are powerful, but jokers also suck. But you like jokers, but you don't like jokers. Welcome to the magic system. You're kind of gambling, and that's one of the... There we go, we're gonna see. Now you may be wondering, aces aren't face cards. Uh, 
what do you want? So that would be a heading one. Do I really want to even put a heading there? I don't think so. However, all car all cards that are played are given to the game master who can use the cards for their own nefarious ends. The GM can throw the cards back into the discard pile to give a penalty to give a player a a character a penalty to a roll. If the players ever exceed twenty one given to the game master, the magic has gone bust, all characters and narrator. I'm gonna have to go through at the very end of all this and just change GM to narrator. Sorcerer the sorcerer class has spells and influence cards that people have, such as allowing characters to switch out hands or trade cards or discard. Discard pile. Yeah. Given to the narrator, the magic is gone, but my twenty one doesn't seem like a lot. And the idea is not really supposed to seem like a lot. Because the more the more luck you have. Because you like being lucky, right? But that doesn't mean everyone can be lucky all the time. So do you want to do it right now and you know, kind of maybe screw over your friends a little bit? Or do you want to wait? You got a ten there. You got a ten of hearts. You need it. But you can wait on it, maybe? You don't need it right now. You can wait. Oh, but you're gonna need to use that sleaze card. You gotta use that diamonds right now. Because if you don't use the diamonds right now, suddenly your unit breaks. So you gotta use the diamonds and the magic goes bust. Nobody has magic anymore because no one has a joker and it's like, no! Uh, it's pretty solid. He's asking if I've seen Apocalypse Now. I actually really enjoy Apocalypse Now. Arguably, one it's one of it's actually a really good movie. Now I like the uh, story behind it more than anything. The the story of actually how Apocalypse Now was filmed, and the kind of the weird shit that went on. It's really fascinating. Come on. Movie more than anything. There we go. I solved the capture. And interact. They always say, "Interact with your audience. Interact with your audience." This is how I interact with my audience. Let's check the Discord. Make sure nothing's on fire. Awesome. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna slap a picture right here, probably. It's kind of a weird way of putting that. So, escalation of magic and madness, atrocities after the death, after the dark moments to do desperate, ter do the, and F. That's kind of a weird way of putting this. Okay, there comes a point. After the atrocities, deaths, and dark moments, do desperate men turn to less scientific methods to come out ahead? Characters may attempt to contract the assistance of a witch doctor, which assist them in performing a ritual characters who participate in a ritual they donate their juju to help with its effects give greater power Okay, so a ritual is composed of three components. Reagents, theatrics, and spin the end of the spirit. A ritual needs components. It can't just be anything. Oh no, it has to be the best of it. I wrote this really informally. 
A ritual needs components. These components, these parts cannot simply be acquired from the store, taken, acquired from the store or a local market. They must be unique and special. It's the blood of a 12-year-old boy who has killed a man. The lock of hair from an aging crone. The water of an untouched lake. Or a weapon stained by the blood of a comrade. The required reagents. must be elaborate, strange, and difficult to acquire. Yeah, rituals aren't really supposed to be like, oh, or everyone just kind of sits around like, oh, let's do a ritual today. No, it's kind of a big thing when it's just like you, everyone's kind of sitting around like, okay, we totally need to do a ritual now, don't we? Yep, everyone's, everyone's kind of panicking. Everyone's kind of freaking out. We're, we're losing men. We're losing support. We need desperate measures. We're doing something that we shouldn't. And everyone kind of looks at each other, not quite sure of what they're doing is right. But it's the only option they really have. So... Oh, hello, anonymous Aurox. So, the ritual's theatrics. Is that my phone dinging? No. Why'd you ding? Phone, why? Why do you do this? Huh. I'm gonna remember that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Rituals, theatrics, are half the battle. We have... The Necessary tools. But you can't just throw them together and expect magic to happen. Which doctor needs the location, the resources, and the audience to make it work. More delusional, desperate, scared, the better. Which doctor is a character? This part calls for a sleaze or brains check. As the spirits demand to be entertained by mortals more by the des by desperate mortals by desperate mortals finally a ritual on the is call upon the spirits to assist them. African spirits. Uh, North Lucian. In times of war, they're old, very old. Yeah, we we'll capitalize spirits. African spirits. Spirits are not peace-loving and happy. Peace-loving and happy. 
lucky bunch. They are old. They are old, wise, powerful, and angry. Everything goes smoothly. Your presence and dread should overcome the ritual attendees. This is where the donation of Juju is needed. Spirit will demand a certain amount of power to manifest its power, to manifest its faith, to manifest its power and powers into the world. Failure to do so could be doom for those involved, while success just make the spirit hungrier. Are you strong enough faith to wrangle and control these ancient spirits? Will you simply let them unleash their terrible wrath. Right, this is when I was using Rele. So, Orelde is a uh, completely bullshit country that I made up, kind of on the spot. And I think I have... Uh, I don't even know where I put it. I think I put it, in, I think I put it a little bit further down. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I'll be using my fictional nation of Orelde, a bastardized version of the Yoruban word for country. Yoruba is kind of more southern... Uh, Southern Nigeria, if you're, if anyone's curious, probably going to get some an angry Yoruban comments being like, we own all of Nigeria. I, I only love, folks, only love. Uh, it's pretty much how I picture this country, a sandwich between Nigeria and Cameroon. President Jonathan Nimbe rigged the election for his son, Thomas Nimbe, to become president. And absolute outside of absolutely screwing the ethnic majority, it's clear that the place is... You know, case of being a dictatorship. Flames of rebellion of sons. Ta-da. So, these are major spirits. So what I'm going to do is put you right here, and I'm going to make a side note. Side note on faith religion. Calling upon spirits of Africa doesn't seem very Christian slash Islamic. Then you would be roughly correct. Local tradition. Traditions always end up seeping into local religious sex. Now, one thing to notice, one thing to know about rituals is that they don't necessarily require using the spirits of Africa as much as they rely on the character's beliefs in the spirits of Africa. The character is a devout the characters or devout Christians. Christians. 
calling upon a local saint or even an imagined one. Local saints, martyrs, or religious icons can be just as powerful as calling upon upon the ancient spirits themselves. The characters are Muslims practicing their faith. Uh, I need to make sure so I don't offend literally everyone. Yeah, this is this is how Notepad and on gets hashtag cancelled. Uh let's see. I can, I can see what I'm trying to say here. Yeah. In row two, though. I'm drinking myself into a coma for fun and profit. Woo! Scientific miracle. God, here we go, everyone. Oh shit, here we go again. Uh, 
I went to Sokoto. Ha! This isn't what I was looking for at all, but I'm gonna nod my head and say, all right. Insert table. a ritual do what does a ritual do What does the ritual do? Okay. Rituals call upon certain spirits. Uh, certain higher power. Let's just say that. Higher powers. To assist with, with problems being faced by by the faction and the characters. How this manifests is simple. Is, is one five way five ways. And then we're gonna just do the characters receive a boon. Something good happens. Good happen. Okay, and sleeve a. Okay, no, 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 no. How I want to do this? Okay. Characters are tasked with asking the appropriate get spirit for assistance, then asking for a favor. In exchange, in exchange for their juju, these requests can be anything. 
But always remember to not overfeed. Spirit. Or underfeed them. As the results of the ritual may prove to be far, far more than what is expected. Example ritual asks, asking, asking, uh, ritual desires spirits. The characters call are desperate for supplies for their troops. As food has been scarce, and mutiny is afoot. The characters call upon Gaku. Creator and fish god, fish god of the Orilean, Orilean, Orile, Eden, Oriel Dan, Oriel Dan, Oriel Oriel words. Ah, come on, just come. Well, then, people. Assistance in filling their stomachs. The narrator is set. Kaku's limit to sixteen. Too many sleep. Hmm. So let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna use the blackjack mechanic. I think I think that's gonna work. Uh. Is sated. Characters reach. 
Reach 21. Total juju. I'll add or within the give of the give of the demand and its tolerance. For example, a spirit that has art has not been called upon and is being asked something something relatively small we we need it to rain to the rain god the tolerance would be 5 so anything between 16 and 21 is valid. Anything under, under is considered to be under feeding and anything over is considered over, considered over feeding. Each character goes around and dedicates one juju card per round. The narrator, narrator, moving in any card, any card they wish. To counteract the others. They actually they have this lasts for Chooses to quit. Hmm. No, 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 that, not that. Yeah, this is what we're doing now. This is what we're doing tonight. Probably gonna be fixing magic and me losing my goddamn mind. to notepad add on streams where I stare at a fucking document notepad document debating on what to type so let's see each character goes around dedicates one juju card per round with a narrator throwing in any card they have to counteract the others this continues until the characters have no card dedicate a oh yeah Completely forgotten when I ended up naming these things. So you want to go to preface, soul talisman. That's it. Dedicates a soul talisman. Soul Talisman. Or the narrator. Or what the characters call it. Or 
or three passes. Mm. Or characters. All characters agree to end it. So that means if you have two tens, ten, ten, and then just say, okay, I'm done. Like, yeah, let's all mutually agree that we're done. You've given up two tens to make it work, but that's the point. But you also have to remember that your tolerance may be 21 exactly. If it's 21 exactly, everyone's going to start working a little bit harder because you're going to say, like, crap, we can only put down a certain number of cards this turn. Or like, oh god, he only got 18, like, I got a 3, but I don't know what he's gonna play! And then everyone starts going a little bit mad. Uh, let's see. Uh, we want to do normal text. Oh, beautiful, it fits just right. So let's do our example. Characters are desperate for supplies with their troops. This food has been scarce. We need to flip. The characters call upon Gaku. Created for fish god. Or they will need the people to ask for assistance. For filling their stomachs. Tol tolerance to... Uh, we'll, we'll be a little bit to three. He is powerful. And also temperamental. If the characters underfeed him, uh, have no cards to get to get soul towels. Or the. Three turns pat. Or three. Yeah, or three turns pass. Or three turns pass. Underfeed if the characters underfeed him. Underfeed him. He does not deliver food as requested. And the character. And the coastal, and the coasts, actually, and the rivers flood, causing even more problems. If the characters sate him, he fish happen to be bountiful in the nearby village which they are more than happy to share if the characters overfeed him the coast become bloated with fish the local villages become targets, militiamen, in the area, needing food. There we go. Weather.
Wilhelm Fisch Happen. Um. All right. So, we've wrapped this section up fairly well. It's not perfect, but that's the entire theme of this goddamn stream. It's not perfect, but... So, shall we start working on the campaign? I think we should start working on the campaign. So, what is the campaign? Well, the campaign is arguably the main point of this game. Oh, hello. I'm going to get a call soon. This will be fun. All right. So, let me see. We're going... Uh, the campaign is part of a long stretch of time, with some rebellions lasting a few months to multi-year... <laughs> yeah, we're going to take, we're going to take this entire section. Uh, Africa... Africa is a large and diverse place. Feel free to create your very own African nation to play around in. Um, your very own African nation to set the campaign in. I'll be using the example of Rile de Riel de Chipen. A, which effectively translates to a country in Yoruba. Overall, the Oh, uh, let me see. Let me see if I can. Um, fictional African country. Zamunda. Fucking totally spies. You didn't know totally spies is going to show up here. Double. 
<laughs> outer heaven, yes. That, that's going to be our our fictional African state. <laughs> so, what I'm going to write here. I'm creating an African state to run in. Consider where it's located. Where it's located. Who potentially colonized it? And the dramatic persona. Persona. And the dramatis. Persona who inhabit the area. Yeah, the two United States of Southern Africa. Who inhabit the area. Establish a small group. Add in a, a handful of ethnic groups. Imports, exports, as well. well as any foreign actors who may have interest in the nation. For example, Orielde, Orielde, Orielde. The country sandwiched between Cameroon and Nigeria, splitting off from the Francophone Cameroonians and the English Nigerians. And they have three major ethnic groups. Tauza. Baruben. Barunen. Barura. And Hebu. You haven't realized that these are completely bastardizations of Nigerian ones, because I have the originality of nothing. I have no originality. Originality is dead and a meme. Fun fact there, kids. Hibu competing over the country's sparse oil resources. As far as rare metal resources. Chinese have invested heavily in the area. But a American firm has been establishing strong ties local Barubans who currently currently run most of the local government Fulvermint despite being a minority When the son of previous president Jonathan Nimbe wins the election, next election in a amazing 
105.3% turnout. And the son of the previous uh, president, Thomas Nimbe. Thomas Nimbe. Nimbe. Nimbe wins the next election. The amazing 103% turnout. Turn out the flames of rebellion. Or sparked. Establish stakes. Establish needs. Most importantly, establish reason to fight. Okay. Each, every country has four kinds of points of interest. Actually, let's post this. <laughs> An amazing 103% turnout. That's actually a thing that occurred in, uh, not Senegal. Uh, God, what happened? Where was it? Where was it? It was a, I want to say it was a Western African country, but don't quote me on that. But there was like a hundred and five percent turnout for the voters, and this guy won by like a complete landslide. It was like one of the most egregious uh, displays of uh, electoral fraud ever. It was because the other guy technically would have won. <laughs> but yeah, I know it's pretty interesting actually. Let's see. Okay, we're still good on time music. Music music time. Bah. <laughs> I'm yawning now. I'm tired. Okay. Every country has four kinds of points of interest. As you notice, these are circles, X's, squares, triangles. So we have Cities and ta cities. These are ma these are major cities that ma these are major cities that are the lifeblood of the country, allowing them to keep functioning as a nation. Whoever controls the city, well, the city controls its vast resources of wealth, recruits, and and, and essential resources. Controls most cities. And also has the most legitimacy in terms of being an actual government. Uh... Okay, we're gonna have to fix this entire part. Okay, cool. Let's get fixing, shall we? Alright. Every con- every- Country, it's five kinds of points of interest inside of them. P O I, side of them. Actually, I want to do points of interest. A point of interest, P O I. is a location inside of the state that is important for the running running important for the con for the country on either a cultural philosoph either a cultural economic or Manpower uh, reason. And he has six kinds of points of interest inside of them. POI inside of them. POI. Cities. These are the major hubs of economic progress. Civilian uh, population, 
cultural importance. M, legitimate, and government, and bureaucratic efficiency. Whoever control, controls a city, controls the vast resources that it comes with. Who it comes with. Whoever holds most cities is also considered to be the most legitimate government of the state. When the faction holds a city, Holding a city, so holding a city, so it's going to generate plus two wealth, plus two resources, and plus two squads, plus one permanent morale. One platoon season. Now I'm going to do a company. Uh, one company. One company a season. Uh, uh, of infantry. Or two companies. Of militia. Actually, I'm going to do one, two companies of militia. Militia. One company of infantry. Or one platoon. Mountaineers, guards, uh, that would be bush fighters, marines, guards, engineers. Scouts. Yeah, controlling a city is very good. We like controlling cities. Controlling cities make it so we can eat and everyone's happy. So if we scroll up a bit. POI, run a POI generator, so we want to go right here. Villages. These are small and important. I'm going to double these actually for four resources for a while. Yeah, legitimacy. 
small yet yeah, important section important parts of the country that provide its economic base as well as its agricultural sector they are often not terribly rich but do come ready to assist those that liberate them. One company of militia, two platoons of infantry, uh, one company of militia, or two platoons of infantry. Every season. a village into training facility able to recruit one company of infantry two able to recruit two companies of militia one company of infantry or one platoon, platoon of bush fighters, marines, guards, engineers, or scouts. Resource point. Village plus two resource. It's two resources. Refugee camp plus one legitimacy. Of interest, these places have valuable supplies. All well, the supplies of food for the troops. Control of the control of one of these can feed a comp. For the troops. Uh, resources also prove to be a valuable source of leverage for, for village loyalty as well as a valuable source of lo village loyalty as well as Keeping other factions in your pocket. Plus two resources. May conv 
convert resource point into industrial point. That's four resources. Civilians center. Uh, actually, excessive morale point plus one morale for the arm, plus one morale field hospital. Oh, uh, I'm looking for a third one. What would be another industrial points to give you more supplies, morale points give you more morale. Um, what am I looking for? I know what I'm trying to find. Um, oh, NC, uh, non NSA base under point to a NSA Z plus. Plus two relations to any plus three relations to any faction. Wealth points. Let's see, Wealth points. Raw assets are used. Buy new equipment. Plus two wealth. Hmm. Thank you, 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 thank you. Yeah, this is this is the hard part when you come down to the nitty gritty and the numbers behind things. This is when things get started getting complicated because you have to worry about numberinos. Sometimes that can get real, real weird, real fast. So let's see. So, cities, I'm going to make this a plus four. But the thing is, you can't convert it into anything. And that also means everyone's going to... So, yeah. So, cultural point. Cultural point. Important places to to the nation in a less valuable sense and more for a unifying sense. Actually, I'm going to need. Yeah. The other one's going to be tactical points. There a new unifying sense of purpose, and those who can control these often are seen as more legitimate. Plus one legitimacy. They convert cultural point two into propaganda propaganda space plus one morale protected cultural site plus two legitimacy so plus one legitimacy uh, Point. 
They recruit one platoon of militia. Actually, yeah, you may recruit one company of militia or one platoon of infantry. Tactical points. These points provide little to no valuable resources, but do provide a tactical advantage over the greater war. Holding on to these points will make it harder or easier for the make it harder to be opposed or make it easier for the faction to remain unopposed mm. confer a specific on map benefit side note tactical points an example tactical point would be the Golan Heights in Syria. A large plateau that overlooks the entire country and able to, to have artillery set up on it. Other tactical points could be river, uh, could be dams, major bridges, deep woods or anything that can confer a fairly major advantage for the character's forces. Characters or enemy forces. That was a mistake. Yo, Pat Anon made a mistake. Yeah, under V. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's so goddamn beautiful. Okay. Shift I. Backspit. Some POI may be converted into different. Uh, some POI may be converted into different aspects, to different advanced types of build, types of 
P O I. These take two seasons to be fully converted. During this time, the characters do not receive any benefits from the POI. And also, conversion also costs a flat five wealth to fully convert over. Oh, ten wealth. Resource points. NSAs, they're, a, they're an interesting bunch. You get some weird NSAs out there. Point uh, backspace control shift eight shift uh, and that actually gives us just enough room to insert a table here in which bada bing bada boom we can put our side note in here. Oh, harvest the resources and continue its rebellion or crush it. However, as the war escalates, the faction may gradually get involved, forcing the re rebels to negotiate for limited resources or attack one another for them. The UN, neighboring countries, and dogs of war may swoop in, seizing POIs from the country. It becomes a question of whether the group should push at them out or negotiate. The other important factions. But everyone, everyone wants something different. And oftentimes they're conflicting. Who do you sacrifice to get help from somebody else? Random POI generator. We're going to make six cities. We're going to bump up the villages to three. Resource points to three and wealth points to two. We're going to add cultural points. We're going to add 1d10 of them. And the tactical points. We're going to only add one. We're actually going to add one d6 tactical points. So we're going to make them pretty valuable. Control shift eight. Random POI generator. Now we get to the war. Now we get to the fun part. War crimes. Oh boy. Uh, simply lowers legitimacy by one. So, this is where things get a little bit complicated on a lot of things. Yeah, uh, this is the UN's official cut down list of war crimes. Now, war crimes are bad. That's a pretty hot take, I know. But 
to, uh, to fully get this, you have to kind of, I'm going to kind of say it. So, uh, so it's effectively, if you target civilians, if you gun down civilians willingly, that's a major war crime. This does constitute for the fact that if you're in a large-scale battle and you bomb a village into the dirt, you're targeting civilians, you're going to lose, you're going to lose the legitimacy. Destruction of non-military targets. Now, what does this mean? Destruction of a non-military target is, let's say there's a t television station that's not being used, it's just, so instead of blowing it up out of, out of the sky, not, not good, that's bad, major. Forced conscription, major. Now you may be wondering, oh, well, what about the villages and doing that? That's them, that's pretty much you going in there with your own troops and saying, hey, come join us. You know, you're going to join us. We think, you know, we can work with the other. And, of course, people are going to join you. There's going to be a handful of guys in the surrounding countryside being it's like, we're going to throw our lot in with you. And that's just kind of how it goes. People are going to do that. People are going to dedicate themselves to your cause because that's what people do. And it's everyone in this kind of the surrounding area. It's, and, yeah. But uh, relocation of civilians... Now, there's two sides to this coin. It's relocating civilians in a peaceful way. Like, hey, you've been completely displaced by an enemy army. We're going to pretty much get you to the border of this other country. We're going to put you in there. We're going to set you up. That's not relocation of civilians. You know, that's uh, making sure people don't fucking die. Uh, relocation of civilians is kicking everyone out of a village <laughs> and saying, uh, get the fuck out. That's relocation. Uh, rape, mass rape, etc. It kind of exactly as it sounds. Uh, hostage taking, using human shields. Don't do it! <laughs> uh, there always comes a point of our POWs considered a uh, hostage. Sort of. Sort of not. Like, you're not really supposed to take things like POWs, but you, there's nothing the UN can really do you from doing it. It's just one of those things. Don't start executing them randomly. And kind of the other uh, issues. So, if you scroll up. So, what we're going to do is scroll up all Scroll up all the way over here. We're going to close that and a war crime, something terrible is a crime committed in the name of war or victory. Some are desperate maneuvers, others. Or simply evil acts. It's actually pretty nice to pretty nice to know. Unfortunately, I'm doing this, so I won't be able to respond to him right away. Others are simply evil acts to deny an enemy resources. Regardless of the reason, a war crime will take place. It is advantageous. It is... It is there for either noble reasons or despicable ones. Like, uh, despicable ones. It is there for either noble reasons or despicable ones. And a war crime takes pl A war crime takes place on a POI and has two separate tiers. Pillaging, 
two separate tiers, pillaging, and destroying. Pillaging, pillaging, a POI is sacking it and taking everything that isn't nailed down with you. With you. The POI does not produce any additional resources. Produce additional resources for the next year. For the next year when it is pillaged. Destroying a POI is as it sounds. Completely destroying a place to make it completely unavailable for anyone. The POI remains as a place to move troops, but nothing is there to harvest or use. And never will be. Pillaging a POI reduces the legitimacy Let's see, of the faction by one while destroying. A POI reduces legitimacy by three. When pillaging, pillaging a faction may take a year's worth of resources from the location immediately. So eight years. May take uh may take two seasons this worth of produced produced uh, resources from the location of me. Actually, I want to say three seasons. So you're not getting everything. You want to produce resources from the location immediately. When destroying when destroying POI the faction takes a full year's Actually, uh, two seasons worth. Two seasons worth. Full years worth of produced resources. So it's getting it right away versus not getting anything at all. <laughs> so if we go up, if we scroll up a little bit, we're going to go right there. Uh, cities. Pledging eight wealth, eight resources, eight resources for companies of uh, militia, two companies of infantry. Ah, actually, certain POI cultural and Tactical points do not produce resources, but simply are rendered 
unusable no duration of the of the war crime so yeah no you can yeah you can absolutely just blow blow something up and just not have to worry about it at all will take place will place if the opportunity and desperation presents itself uh, destroying a POI is attempt Actually, gonna bump these up by one, so it's gonna be two and four. So it leaves minor war crimes a little bit more. So legitimacy effects. Targeting civilians, uh, major to legitimacy, minor one legitimacy. Uh, it's not received. It's ten. It's not receive. It's not the event for feeling that to represent this any POI. A B, pillaged or destroyed. Faction does not receive the resources from it but instead the faction gains plus two slash or plus four morale overall Nations is spread thin with bulk of located inside cities. It's two priorities to claim with necessary resources it has to, and punish rebellions that claim part. Claim necessary reasons it must, and punish the rebellions that, that claim parts of the country. Security is paramount in this situation. Now, with the border secured, then it's start asking for assistance. Soon, the rebels will be faced with overwhelming odds of American, European, Chinese influence, and as NSA start to going to enemy locations. The characters are only back foot initially, they must they have to seize the momentum to survive. The rebellions start cropping up, the first thing when things start getting dangerous, as now no now no negotiations and diplomacy are being forced. Reputation and legitimacy. Reputation is starts at zero and we buy one for a maximum of ten. Uh, uh, or gives them resources wealth that they demand. Reputation could fall well as well to negative 10 by negative 5, consider open hostility between the major faction and the cape. This is the UN. Yeah, the US will personally not invade unless situated to manage it if they do not have overwhelming force and ability. Shitty food and work, and that work given us scraps.
Rude City is plus one, right? Or did I make it plus two? Okay, so we're going to have to rewrite this section a little bit. Legitimacy is built from 0 to 10. Every season, the faction controls a city. Every season, the faction controls the majority of the cities. They receive plus one legitimacy. Paying the UN five wealth also increases legitimacy by plus one. Holding holding over one half of the POIs in the country produces plus one legitimacy every season. Various other effects and events may also increase the legitimacy of the character's faction. The character's faction. At five legitimacy, at five legitimacy, the major factions acknowledge you as a contender for the government and will no longer directly intervene. <laughs> legitimacy faction is considered a de facto government is considered a government by the major factions for better or for worse The higher the legitimacy of the, of the faction is, the higher the legitimacy of the faction is, the more international recognition, recon, recognition, recognition, and support they may receive, but it also magnifies. Any perceived slights and problems with other factions. With other factions. Effectively speaking, the higher your legitimacy is, so if you have super high legitimacy, people are going to recognize you. You're not, you're not just some random smuck now. You are a legitimate contender for the government. This is good. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, we're legitimate contenders for the government. On the other hand, you're now have to going to deal with the fact that you're a legitimate pretender, and people are going to start asking questions. Hey, so what's going to be your economic policy when we're done? And if you've been fighting a war, you're like, uh, I don't know. you're going to need to have people ready. You're going to need to have a manifesto, effectively. Or when your legitimacy gets that high, because once you do hit that that size, when you do become more legitimate as a nation, as a faction, you start becoming a lot more responsible for things, whether you like it or not. Now, as this is where faction management every month, uh, every season, every season, all control points. 
Actually, no. Yeah, every season, all controlled points where there are soldiers present, fighting is not, fighting is not not occurring. Produces one of their produces their resources. Their set their set of resources. Three months. Every three months is a season. So, all companies in the field consume one resource. Hmm. Supreme Commander. platoons in the field. Let's see, actually. How many... You're gonna expect to have quite a... Yeah, I'm gonna do companies. In the field. Insert footnote. Fighting or moving to a new POI. One thing to note is, roughly speaking, you know, completely roughly speaking, you are working at a. Oh jeez. Biafra, please stop. Let's let's reduce the let's flag of Biafra a little bit. Yeah, let's control it. Uh, when a country hits 10 anarchy, the government collapses and is free for all for power. Choice of a scene and one. You disappear. Why? Why did you disappear? Delete. Oh god. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Okay. Let's hit backspace. Come on. Come on. Fine. If you don't want to play. Oh my god. Son of a. I love Google Docs. Google Docs is the best. There's nothing wrong with Google Docs at all. Five, 
wealth. We spent to increase morale by one. Position on plays, allies, enemies, threats, and manipulate and the manipulated. We'd find a fraction of the tiring. Practical insurgents. Take any necessary measure to win the war. More aid than those lower legitimacy will not take the fight they cannot win, but stand their ground if they are cornered. Will surrender if they are promised a good deal. Expect revolt if it is not followed through. Every year, four seasons, the character is select a new perk from the class, raise an attribute by one, even or raise an attribute by one, even past ten. They also gain experience during their time in the field. At 10 experience, character may select a new perk from their class or another class. Or raise the attribute by 1, even past 10. Participating in a war crime, we should be winning a large scale battle. Each kill during a small scale battle. Major advancement in the war story. Partaking in ritual. Rep reputation with a. F uh. No. Warriors and speaker. Warrior. You expect partaking in battle, all speakers gain it naturally over the court. Actually, uh, for example, a murder is to the murder is a warrior. He's going to get wild bursts of experience and then rip through the enemy, but scammer is going to slowly gain experience every season with his perks. This is intentional as warriors quickly become desensitized to violence around them. They're most likely to get gunned down in a fight, so you're. <laughs> Side note, so you're dead. <laughs> Uh, congratulations, roll up a new character. In all seriousness, yes, you're starting with round zero. Get five perks. Get, gain five perks. And that's three warlord, one scavenger, one scavenger. If they die, they take four perks from their chosen in their chosen class. Okay. So, wars may involve people from all walks of life. These are just a handful of the men and women you will encounter. These are universal characters, can be used on the fly if need be. Important characters, fully kit about with the character sheet. All UCs have a set of skills. If they have a skill, it's soon to be one half rounding up to the associated attribute. For example, a trained soldier has a gun skill, which is Twitch 5, so the soldier has a gun skill of 3. The UC, if the UC if has the choice of the same skill twice, it is assumed to be the full value of the attribute. For example, the veteran soldiers have a twitch of six and tie it done to, so you have a gun skill of six. You see, you have character class and also choose a series of perks from that class list. Well, you see, it's operating on the blue weeding system, deeming that if they are stuck, damage is applied to the body. Petty warlord, war leaders. Sorcerer, con artist, scrap lord, operator. Alright, actually, that is us running through everything. I actually took a little bit, not as long as I was thinking it was going to, so. Oh wow, okay. Alright, cool. We wrap that up. So, everyone. Thank you for watching for two hours and twenty minutes. Fuck me. Uh, what have we gotten done today? A lot of shit. But with everything getting wrapped up, what we're going to be doing tomorrow is we're going to be starting the process of adding things to the book from other uh, the other expansions, such as Sananju and Survivors and Slaughter. In addition, we are going to start reorganizing the book slightly just to make things a little bit easier to read. We didn't do that tonight because I just wanted to get through everything and all the cleaning. And finally, what we're going to do, so I'm going to just give a big old stretch, is I, we, after everything is that is done, we're going to actually start on adding things, which is going to be real exciting. 
So everyone, thank you very much. Have a wonderful rest of your night.